Hey guys, welcome back. Jeremy here with JM Aero Service and Repair. Today I'm going to be walking you through an oil change on a Rotax 912 ULS. We will also be covering the 200 hour tank cleaning, cutting open and inspecting the oil filter, and checking and retorquing and safety in the magnetic plug. I'm going to walk you guys through all the items that you will need to carry out this particular procedure. You will need three liters of proper oil. In this case, we're using the AeroShell Sport Plus 4, which is formulated for the Rotax aircraft engine. It is a 10W40 semi-synthetic oil that is compatible with Hunter Low Lead and 91 Mo Gas. We are using our genuine Rotax oil filter. Gloves for safety, especially if there's lead in the oil. We have a clean container we will be using for cleaning the filter element once it's removed from the old oil filter. You will need a container to drain your oil into. A 7 8 wrench. The 3060s are very helpful for getting some of the tank fittings that are a little hard to reach on some engines. A Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, flashlight, a razor knife, this is very important if you're going to be cutting the oil filter element open, having a sharp razor knife is really the key to getting that element out of the filter and intact uh, without shredding it. You're also going to need a oil filter cutter and make sure you're purchasing one that is suitable for the small diameter Rotax oil filters. You will need a breaker bar with a 16 millimeter. Uh, either 6 or 12 point socket for removing the mag plug. If you have an older engine, you're going to need a Torx uh, T40 Torx bit. And uh, if you are running those, I highly recommend upgrading to the 16 millimeter hex bolt head uh, magnetic plug because a um, lot less chance of stripping those out. You will need an oil filter removing wrench. These jaw type ones are really the best way to do it and they are available at most auto parts stores. You will need your calibrated torque wrench capable of torquing to 18 and a half foot pounds. You will need safety wire pliers and either 32 thousandths or 41 thousandths safety wire and a pair of diagonal cutters. We've determined that we have the proper tools that we need along with the consumable materials necessary to complete the oil change. The next step is to pull the aircraft out and run her up to operating temperature. What this will do is it'll allow the contaminants that are in the oil to be suspended in the oil and then when we go to drain it, it um, works much more efficiently at getting those contaminants out of the system. Okay, so we've reached 175 degrees Fahrenheit on our oil temperature. The next step is we want to go ahead and burp the engine, which involves spinning the propeller in the direction of rotation anywhere from 5 to 20 times and pausing at the top of each compression stroke to allow pressure inside the cylinders to bleed past the rings, thus pressurizing the crankcase and returning the small amount of oil that's located in the bottom of the case back to the oil tank located on the firewall via the return line. For this procedure, you're gonna to wanna to have the cap removed so that you can hear the distinct gurgling noise generated when the propeller is rotated. We have determined that all the oil has been returned from the bottom of the crankcase into the sump. The next step is to go to the bottom of the sump and drain the oil out. On this particular aircraft, we have a Curtis drain valve that is installed in place of the stainless steel OEM Rotax drain plug. We're gonna go ahead and allow the oil to drain into the container. If you are on an oil analysis program, then this is where you're gonna to wanna to be taking your sample, but you don't wanna use the very beginning portion of the oil that's drained out. It's better to use about mid tank or so. So let it drain about eight to 10 ounces before taking your sample. Now that our oil is done draining, we're gonna go ahead and shut the valve off and we are gonna get our jaw type oil filter wrench and loosen the oil filter. 
If your aircraft is equipped with a oil cooler or radiator installed under the oil pump and oil filter area, you're gonna to wanna to ensure that you're properly protecting those components from getting covered in oil, which could reduce efficiency uh, if oil and dust start to accumulate on those cooling surfaces. This is also a good time to add that now that the oil has been drained out of the sump and that the filter is being removed, you're gonna to wanna to make sure and not rotate the prop until the new filter and the oil is reinstalled. Next, you're gonna to wanna to get your new oil filter, put a small drop of oil on the sealing lip and ensure that it is properly lubricated. Unlike a conventional aircraft oil filter, the Rotax oil filters do not have a provision for putting a socket and torquing them. They do, however, have instructions that indicate to lubricate the seal, screw the filter on until seated, and then continue another 270 degrees or three quarters of a turn past being seated. The filter has now made contact with the pump and we have the logo of the hand touching the oil filter in the 12 o'clock position. We are now gonna further tighten the filter so that the logo rotates around and will be in the nine o'clock position over here. We have our filter fully installed now. I have it as tight as I can go with my hand and I think I had actually tightened it a little past seated because we didn't come quite up to the nine o'clock position in reference to the logo, but there's certainly uh, no way of getting this thing any tighter. Next, we're gonna go ahead and inspect our magnetic plug. First step is to remove the old safety wire. Now we're gonna use our 16 millimeter socket and break the plug loose. This part of the procedure can also be a little messy. There's a small amount of oil that's located in the bottom of the gearbox that doesn't actually overflow into the crankcase via the ports bored into the case. So when you do pull this mag plug out, you can expect about anywhere from uh, two to six ounces of oil to leak out. With your mag plug removed, you can properly evaluate the buildup on it and determine if there are any issues. It's not uncommon to see a small amount of material like this on the magnet. Typically, this comes from the three spring washers that are located inside of the gearbox. These spring washers um, put pressure on the back side of the clutch and are what you're measuring when you check your friction torque inside of your gearbox during your 100 hour inspection. These washers throughout the entire time the engine is running are constantly wearing a small amount. And typically the buildup that's found on the mag plug is coming from the lip on these spring washers. As the engine runs, they kind of sit there and chafe together a little bit. And of course the oil lubrication is supposed to cut down on that. There are a couple things you wanna look for when you're checking the mag plug. One thing is you wanna determine that there are no pieces of material that are two millimeters or longer in length. This would be a mandatory grounding of the aircraft until the propeller gearbox is disassembled and the source of the metal can be determined. You wanna take the buildup on your fingers and smear it and you want to make sure that you don't feel any sort of slivers or chips that it should just feel like a very fine graphite metallic paste with the metallic plug cleaned it's ready to be installed back in the crankcase the mag plug can now be torqued to 25 newton meters Now that we have our magnetic plug torque to 25 Newton meters, the next step is to properly safety wire it. We wanna ensure that the safety wire is installed so that it passes through the magnetic plug 
and pulls the bolt in a direction that caused the bolt to tighten. This will prevent it from backing off in the event of vibration or loss of torque. One of the best places to safety wire to is the fixation bolt located on the top of the crankcase. This bolt is used for any time you're locking the crankshaft for various procedures, but is also a good anchoring point for the safety wire. You wanna make sure that you don't have any slack in the safety wire and that it wraps around the bolt and that you allow it to extend out about three quarters of a turn you terminate the wire and then bend it back on itself to ensure that it doesn't unravel.